Next up, we have Sharpedo. Sharpedo went from a starring role in the film Jaws to the third generation of Pokemon and beyond, where it was terrifying for a number of reasons. It could swim at 75 miles per hour or 120 kilometers per hour, its fangs could slice through iron, and it could charge through an oil tanker ship by itself. You don't get a nickname like the Bully of the Sea without thoroughly earning it. Its ability to make people afraid to go swimming aside, today we're going to examine if Sharpedo and its serrated fangs were as monstrous in the competitive scene as it was in the world of Pokemon. And so we ask, how good was Sharpedo actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. Starting off in Gen 3, Sharpedo wasn't able to swim with the bigger fish in its debut generation of OU. The metagame demanded its water types have some sort of defensive use, and even the most fragile of the bunch, Starmie, was useful defensively thanks to its blinding speed, letting it offensively check nearly the entire metagame, while also having the ability to take at least almost any one hit. Even a weaker super effective move, like a stray hidden power grass or a choice band earthquake from Salamence and Metagross. Now if Starmie constitutes as frail, then Sharpedo was straight up made of paper. Its defenses are absolutely abysmal. To give you an idea, Swampert's uninvested Earthquake had a very good chance to put Sharpedo into range to be KO'd by Sandstorm. What's more, Sharpedo wasn't exactly a glass cannon because it was made out of glass, but it was missing the cannon part. It didn't have any stab for its 120 base attack thanks to the type based physical special split Gen 3 had, and its 95 special attack wasn't anything special, being weaker than the aforementioned mentioned Starmie. So Sharpedo wasn't just outclassed, it was all around bad. However, in Yu Yu, it was a different story. Sharpedo was a terror. It was still fragile, but it hit the metagame's common Pokemon quite hard. Hard enough to where the daunting task of getting it on the field safely was worth the effort. Plus there, it wasn't all that difficult to get in safely, since it had a useful psychic immunity, letting it come in safely against the popular Lunatone and threaten much of the opposing team with terrific coverage in its stab combination alongside Ice Beam. These three moves made made it very difficult to switch into Sharpedo safely. Well, but why only three moves? Couldn't it use a fourth attack? Well, it could, but then it'd be passing up on its unique, invaluable defensive use. Yes, that's right, Sharpedo, frailest of the frail, had an incredibly useful defensive role. Thanks to its ability Rough Skin, an ability that no other Pokemon in Gen 3 had, besides its pre-evolution Carvana, Sharpedo was able to get chip damage on an opponent making contact with it. Now on its own, that doesn't sound too impressive. Getting 6% on the opponent in exchange for tanking and attack that was nigh guaranteed to KO Sharpedo in return hardly seemed worth it. However, keep in mind that Selackberry reversal users, such as Scyther and Hitmonlee, were incredibly common and dangerous, capable of destroying entire teams with their unmatched speed and power, posing immense threats to the offensive teams Sharpedo fit on in particular. Reversal was a contact move, and with those Pokemon at 1 HP, Rough Skin would take them out. Okay, so you might say being able to sacrifice Sharpedo in exchange for taking out an opponent's super Danger Sweeper is pretty good defensive utility for such a frail Pokemon. And to that we say, it didn't end there. Sharpedo's fourth move was Endure. This allowed it to survive reversal and take the opposing Pokemon out. Furthermore, enduring any sort of hit would activate Sharpedo's own Select Berry, making it more of a threat in its own right, as it now outsped the entire offensive metagame, limiting the opponent's options to deal with it as they could no longer rely on just being faster. This made Sharpedo an immense endgame threat against weakened teams. As for the reversal users, you may think, well, couldn't they just predict the Endure? The answer is yes, but then they would never be able to KO Sharpedo without KOing themselves, and that was often good enough. Endure also had other excellent applications. It worked even at 1 HP, meaning Sharpedo could, for example, safely scout the intended move of a choice band user like Kangaskhan, Hitmonlee, or Scyther. Overall, Gen 3 UU Sharpedo was an excellent one-of-a-kind Pokemon with an incredibly cool strategy. OU was once more far beyond Sharpedo's fins, but it found itself with a nice niche in UU once more. It loved its stabs now, coming off its significantly higher physical attack set thanks to the new physical special split. Now it did have stiff competition, as Feraligator was generally a lot more appealing because it threatened to sweep with Dragon Dance and Swords Dance. However, Sharpedo did have some notable advantages over the Gator. Its stab crunch was terrific for trashing the common Uxie and Mesprit. This made Sharpedo a terrific lead, especially because it had 
had Taunt to stop the Pixies, Stealth Rock, or Thunder Wave, as well as preventing Amistar, Quillfish, and Cloyster from setting hazards up. It also threatened out Moltres leads and beat Sash Alakazam thanks to Aqua Jet. It wasn't just good at matching up well against the common leads. It could spread damage on the opposing team easily, as Taunt prevented Milotic from healing off its crunches. This was helped by its base 95 speed being excellent by UU standards, getting the jump on many common offensive Pokemon already considered decently fast, such as Moltres, Kangaskhan, and Rotom. Sharpedo could also use its solid attack and speed as a mid-game attacker, capable of compromising the opposing team's defensive integrity. By adding a Life Orb, it became even more powerful and thus difficult to deal with. Increased coverage in Earthquake and Ice Fang allowed it to handle a greater variety of important Pokemon, such as Registeel, Toxicroak, Torterra, and Altaria. It could even run Zen Headbutt to really smash Venusaur and smack Hitmontop as well. It also had the ability to immediately hit Slowbro far harder than Feraligator, thanks to the stab it had on Crunch, as well as the fact that it didn't have to pick and choose its coverage options like Feraligator did. Sharpedo would never sweep though, as its frailty held it back too much against the plethora of priority running around in Yu as even Azumarill's resisted Aqua Jet was too much for it to handle. Plus, its speed, while good, left it vulnerable to revenge killing from other common Pokemon like Scyther and Miss Magius, to say nothing of Choice Scarfers. However, despite its flaws and its tough competition, Sharpedo holds a unique niche in the metagame. It's a solid choice for the enterprising player and is emblematic of Gen 4 UU's capacity for making almost anything viable. Generation 5's Dream World blessed Sharpedo with an incredible ability, Speed Boost. No longer would it have to put up with easily being revenge killed. After one turn, it would outspeed anything without a Choice Scarf, and after two turns, it would outspeed every Choice Scarfer. It survived for those turns by circumventing its frailty via a combination of threatening slower Pokemon weak to its attacks and Protect. For the first time, Sharpedo was not only not terrible in OU, but it had a real niche to boot. Permanent Rain gave it a much appreciated power boost and it hit a large majority of the metagame super effectively, given all the ground, psychics, and heat rend there were running around. As long as Ferrothorn was weakened, which isn't too difficult to achieve given how many other attackers it was tasked with taking, such as Latios's Draco Meteor, Sharpedo bowled weakened teams over. Now of course it wasn't easy to just slap it on a team, as it was still flawed. It of course could just about never switch in safely, and was thus mostly used as an all-in sweep or bust Pokemon, who wasn't a stranger to failure given how Sharpedo sometimes came up just short of a KO or was revenge killed by a priority move like Scissor's Bullet Punch or Dragonite's Extreme Speed. Nevertheless, a true niche it did have. Seeing Sharpedo in team preview was cause for fear, having to prepare so that it didn't run one's teams over in the endgame, as it so effortlessly did against so many rain teams. But unfortunately, this niche dropped out of existence once Black and White 2 came around, as Keldeo was the most perfect offensive Sharpedo check one could ask for, and Technician Mach Punch Breloom didn't much help matters either. However, Sharpedo at least finally had legitimate OU use under its belt. As for UU, it was excellent. Arguably the most dangerous cleaner in the tier. Absolutely wiping the floor with offense. With the slightest chip damage that could be easily achieved with spike support, entire teams were put in Sharpedo range. It elected to use a special set despite the lowering attack stat, because that way it achieved one-hit KOs on the highest amount of Pokemon. Incredibly crucial targets such as Needle Queen, Gligar, Slowbro, Drudagon, and Zap with Stealth Rock. This was imperative given Sharpedo's literal do or die nature. While Sharpedo was fairly useless against stall teams, that wasn't what its role was meant to be. It was meant to use its speed to blitz past fast offensive Pokemon, even clean up choice scarfers like Heracross, and dominate them. Even offensive teams' naturally bulkiest Pokemon, like Drudagon, Shaman, and Kofagrigus, dipped into Sharpedo range with a single Stealth Rock hit. Oftentimes, Sharpedo Sweep wasn't stopped by an opposing Pokemon, but instead its own Hydro Pump accuracy. Overall, Sharpedo was one note, but that one note was the sweetest sound in the world for anyone facing an offensive team. Sharpedo was passed over for the entirety of XY, but come Oras, it was gifted an excellent Mega Evolution. In addition to every one of its non-HP stats being buffed, including its attack shooting up to a staggering 140, it gained the Strong Jaw ability, whose 50% boost to biting attacks made Ice Fang more fearsome and turned Crunch into a devastating weapon. Plus, it still had speed boost before Mega Evolving, allowing it to become both faster and stronger before going in for the sweep. However, it wasn't all or nothing. As 
if it was forced to switch out and lose the plus one speed, it would still come back with an improved great base 105 stat, allowing it to still outrun a large amount of important Pokemon. As a bonus, even its defenses were given a boost, so it could actually take an occasional earthquake, making it even less hit or miss. Now, it never got any serious use in OU, but it was excellent once more in UU. Against offensive teams, it could hang back until the opposition had been weakened, so it could safely go for the cleanup, blazing by speedsters like Mega Aerodactyl and Scarf Hydreigon. Its powerful Ice Fang chomping its way through the ever common Hydreigon, looking to resist its stabs. Also, it didn't even automatically fold to priority. It could always survive Infernate's life orbed vacuum wave, even after Stealth Rock. Against defense, Sharpedo's speed wasn't of nearly as much importance, so it could mega evolve and act as a wall breaker with its dangerous crunches. This flexibility in the kind of offense it could deliver made Sharpedo well worth its status as a defensive liability. Also, Sharpedo wasn't beholden to going mega. It could run a life orb set with Destiny Bond to turn its low defenses into a guaranteed KO on the opponent. But Sharpedo was the bread and butter that carved out its place in the UU metagame as one of the most dangerous offensive threats. Mega Sharpedo still failed to leave a mark on OU, given the absolute plethora of fairies and grasses, as well as the fact that there was another offensive water dark type, the amazing Ash Greninja. However, Sharpedo returned to UU with a vengeance. Its crunch feasted on the incredibly common Latias, it shrugged off Scizor's bullet punches, and thanks to Generation 7 mechanics, it couldn't even be paralyzed by Klefki's prankster Thunder Wave. Once again, it was incredibly difficult to switch into, threatening a vast majority of the metagame. Matter of fact, this time around, that majority was even more vast thanks to Sharpedo improving its coverage with the new Psychic Fangs, which was boosted by Strongjaw and thus absolutely shattered Amoongus and Tentacruel. It effortlessly mulled through offensive staples such as Niho Eagle, Terrakion, Starmie, and Mega Aerodactyl, and with spike support, was none too easy to wall with bulkier Pokemon like Swampert either, since Pokemon like Swampert and Mega Altaria tended to just barely hang on against Mega Sharpedo's insanely strong attacks, meaning even a little chip damage could easily push them into Sharpedo's KO threshold. Sharpedo fit perfectly on popular Spikes offense teams too. The fast pace these teams operated at meant Sharpedo's inability to switch in safely mattered very little, and the immense pressure it exerted made it nigh impossible to defog or rapid spin on, allowing it to make full use of the hazards and break down the opponent's team for a teammate to more easily clean up. Alternatively, it could clean up itself, depending on which was more appropriate against an opponent's given team. Overall, Mega Sharpedo was once again an absolutely devastating force in UU. As for regular Sharpedo, it wound up in RU, but it certainly didn't last very long. It was so overwhelmingly powerful that it was banned to RU borderline before Ultra Sun and Moon even came out. It effortlessly swept entire offensive teams at a moment's notice and forced players to go to unhealthy lengths to cover it since the options were so limited. So everyone was glad to see Sharpedo swim away from RU. And before we end, we can talk about Sharpedo and VGC briefly. Auras may have granted Sharpedo an extremely cool Mega evolution, but it's hard to make a case for it in terms of speed and power when other Megas like Mega Salamence, Kangaskhan, Mawile, and many others exist. As a physical water type attacker, it's safe to say historically that players have opted to use Mega Gyarados or Swampert for the years of 2015 and 2018 where all three were legal if they want to give up a Mega slot as evidenced by the myriad of placements from those two. Gyarados even shares Sharpedo's typing when it mega evolves, and even though Sharpedo does get speed boost before it mega evolves and insanely high damage with its jaw moves thanks to strong jaw, it lacks the bulk and utility that Gyarados slash Mega Gyarados has with its access to intimidate before it mega evolves. And Mega Gyarados' 155 base attack stat is definitely nothing to sneeze at, whereas Sharpedo's bulk is still abysmal even as a mega. 2019 holds the same problem in terms of mega slot competitions, just with different megas plus mega ray, but at least Sharpedo Torpedo can damage the Necrozmas with a strong jaw boosted crunch. Anyways, because of all this, it's no surprise that only a few trainers managed to obtain notable placements with Mega Sharpedo. One being in 2015 at a European Nationals, and two at these regionals respectively during the 2019 Ultra Series. So congratulations to these players for their achievements and experimentation, but unfortunately, that is all that exists for Sharpedo's small VGC career. And that's it! So how good was Sharpedo actually? Well, it's never been one for OU, save for a brief period in Black and White 1, where it had a legitimate niche before the fourth horse of the apocalypse, Keldeo, came to ruin it. However, it has been a UU lifer, and has always been at least genuinely good, often even considered great in that tier. From its unique place in its debut generation, to the speed boost styled cleanings of Gen 5, to its fierce mega evolution, Sharpedo has always had a fierce offensive presence, and effective despite its immense frailty. It will 
likely be a threat if it returns to Gen 8 UU, at least if Gen 7 is anything to go by, as dropping it any further would be a mistake on par with the Jaws sequels. Thanks for watching everyone, and as always if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content, and in the comments I want to know what do you think about competitive Sharpedo, how would you improve it to make it finally reach OU status, whatever it is let me know in the comments. Also thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos, and thank you to everyone else watching as well. And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.